If you've ever found yourself, one evening, wandering down a quiet street in the rain, looking for somewhere to take shelter, you'll know what a blessed relief it is to find such a place as Rain Day Antiques. It hoves into view between two residential buildings. A beautiful double-fronted store with a big window on either side of the entrance. The windows are divided up into square panes and the glass between the metal bars is ever so slightly wavy, giving the place a dream-like quality. This quaint little establishment stays open 24-7, if you can believe it, catering to international antique connoisseurs who might arrive at any hour and casual passers-by. Which of these categories you fall into, well, that's up to you. On a night like tonight, when the street lamps are fuzzy halos and the rain starts coming down harder so that your footsteps make little slaps and squelches on the sidewalk. There's nothing more welcome than the misty orange light seeping through the antique store's steamed-up windows and its weather-beaten old sign hanging above the doorway now creaking a little in the damp breeze that says, come on in, we're open. Inside, Brain Day Antiques is as cozy as can be. Push open the door and you'll find yourself enfolded in a set of heavy red velvet drapes. Extra protection against the elements. As you emerge through these into the store, the drapery rings click gently as they glide across the rail. It's quite a place. Above you is a domed skylight that looks up into the night and the rain patters satisfyingly onto the glass overhead. There's plenty of space to move around, but every surface is piled high with curios, ornaments and works of art. To the left of the door is a brass umbrella stand, and above it a set of coat hooks. So feel free to unburden yourself of any damp layers and take this chance to really relax. The owner of this charming emporium is a middle-aged man named Henry a dapper and hirsute gentleman who is sitting quietly in the corner of his kingdom reading a newspaper. Henry is the kindest man you could ever hope to meet. He's a true listener and there are very few people you can say that about. If you ever chose to confide in him, you can be sure he'd listen carefully until the end. Then he'd say something very simple, but very wise. Something that would let you know everything's going to be okay. Now, as you enter, he nods at you graciously with an unobtrusive hospitality that says you're welcome to browse in peace for as long as you like, but if you need him, he's right here. Ha! 
have you ever seen so many wonderful items in one place? Look over there. Sitting proudly on top of an antique sideboard is a leather hippo, about the size of a footstool. But if anyone actually went so far as to rest their feet on this hippo's gently curved back, where a neat seam runs along it, well, that would seem very unkind. More likely, you'd want to give this hippo a little pat from time to time. Try it. His mahogany-colored bulk is surprisingly firm, with just a hint of something rumpled underneath his stuffing. Where he's been sewn together, his stitches are straining somewhat, as if he's had one too many good meals. Well, he's lived a long time. Over the years, he's become rather worn and discolored in places, but that only adds to his character. You'd almost be tempted to give him a name. What could it be? George? Aubrey? Or perhaps her name is Victoria or Gretchen. Either way, this is one dignified hippo. There's something so comforting about pottering around in here while the rain is rushing down outside. Henry, the proprietor, is playing a little light classical music in the background. It's hard to tell where it's coming from. Perhaps from the gramophone you can see sitting on a cabinet just behind Henry. Its golden horn wide open in the low light like a night-blooming flower. But no, the record resting on the turntable is still, so the music must be coming from some digital source. Beneath the gramophone, a sign states firmly, not for sale. Well, of course, it's hard to imagine how Henry and bring himself to part with any of these things. In any case, the gentle strings are a perfect accompaniment to the rain, which is trickling down the storefront windows with a rushing, crackling sound, which reminds you, such is the coziness in here, of the sound a fire makes, burning logs in a harp. The store smells of old books and radiators with a slight freshness where the scent of rain is rising from your wet umbrella as it drips into the stand. Every so often, the lights of a car streak through the window, illuminating the darker corners of the store. In that moment, you see a row of leather-bound books and a fine folding room screen. Its silk panels are embroidered with Japanese scenery. Houses with curved roofs surrounded by trees. A bridge arching over a river. Sound of the car passing is a loud sigh when the rain seems to briefly up its tempo before resuming its steady rhythm. You could stay here all night, just breathing in and looking at things, thinking about their story.